Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I thought I would show you how I am going to be tackling this Border Collie's nose. I don't normally get the muzzle area drawn in first, normally I do the actual nose but for some reason I've got the area mapped in around it so I thought I would take this opportunity to show you how I am drawing a dog nose in coloured pencils. This isn't really a tutorial as such but I will have the image hopefully up in the corner so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I will just talk you through step by step why I'm doing this stuff um, and yeah I hope it's helpful. So uh, what I'm going to do is start with the dark sepia and I like to sort of outline the main dark shapes so the, the nostrils here are going to be really dark um, and what I am doing is just trying to get those main points mapped in but very light pressure. I'm not pressing hard with any of the uh, layers at this point. I just want to lightly map it in. This is just going to help get the general shape and size as well of everything kind of mapped in place um, without you know worrying that we've got something completely wrong. Also, just need to double check my uh, nose here because I feel like I just had the proportions a little off, but it looks okay now I've added colour. One of the things to remember, and actually, I'll get my, if I just grab my Pablo pencil. Um, so, what I'm trying to do is line up the top of the nostrils so that they're in a line. So, you can see they're more or less, this one's a little taller, but with the shading, I should be able to balance them out. And I want that to line up with the bottom of the nose. So here we've got a nice, these noses um, might need to come down a little more here, but they're, they're going to line up. Uh, and the thing with when you're drawing dogs as well, I think her head is actually on a bit of a tilt, but if I just move the page down a bit. So the top of the eyes line up with the bottom, oops, top of the eyes line up with the bottom of the eyes, which line up with the top of the nose, the top of the nostrils, the bottom of the nostrils, the bottom of the nose, the top of the mouth, and if her mouth was closed, she's got a tongue open, it would line up with the bottom of the chin. So actually her head is on a tilt, so if I just get everything kind of lined up, it is actually accurate. Um, so yeah, that's a nice little trick to help you there. And all I'm going to do is just slowly map in, as I say, nice and lightly and gently these darker shapes. And it's just going to slowly build up the shape of her nose. It's a little bluer up here, so I'll come in with the blues. And again, a bit more brown toned on this side of her nose. Just want to use, as I say, very light pressure just to build up everything. Now I do actually want to come in with like a luminance pencil to um, give a base layer, but I don't really think there's a luminance colour that I could particularly use here. So I'm going to start off with my warm grey too because it is a very warm coloured nose. I'm just going to sharpen it. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to start, I always like to say to start at the bottom of the nose. I say the bottom of the nose, kind of this top part here and down is where I like to start on the noses. Uh, don't know why, it's just something that comes natural now. <laughs> They'll leave a little highlight here, it's just quite a bright highlight. I'm using firm pressure. I don't want to eradicate all the tooth of the paper. But it is um, just helping to slightly smooth it out. It's not going to be 100% smooth, which is what I want. I don't, I don't want it to be 100% smooth. I want to be able to obviously work on top of this. And whenever you're doing something like this, don't rush. You just take your time, 
because they can be tricky. <laughs> Um, right, so as I'm looking, I am seeing these brown tones, so I'm going to come in with my Burnt Umber. Okay, now as I'm doing this, I want to really follow the shape of this nostril, so it's kind of coming down that curve here and down. Got to remember uh, with noses, well anything really, it's 3D, so I really want to capture that. Also, just going to curve it out of this nostril here. Now, what I do when I'm working on the bottom of the nose, I tend to do sort of linear motions. As you can see, I'm just following that shape and doing small curved lines, which is just going to help create this sort of natural rounded shape whereas when I come to the top of the nose you'll see that I use more circular motions and this is just down to the different textures we can see on the nose I'm just going to bring it over this side as well. Not all the way over because I can see more blue tones here, but there's definitely some of the brownish tones going on. Okay, for those blue tones, I'm going to take the dark indigo first. And again, I'm just going to do the same thing with the dark indigo. I'm just going to follow the shapes. This is a really nice blue. And again, this is such light pressure. You can see I'm not really adding any pressure. I'm just letting the pigment lie on the page as sort of smoothly as possible. Sorry, there's a mark there that was annoying me. Okay, now as I'm building this up, I can see that this sort of darker nostril is disappearing. And I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is, once I've finished with this dark indigo, I'm actually going to take the black, because this is going to be dark. Um, again, I'm not going to press too firmly just yet, because I'm not... Not, I'm confident in the placement of everything, but I just want to build up that confidence a bit more um, by laying down more colours on the actual nose itself. But by coming in with black, it's just going to add that colour that we need. So it's just going to help us see where everything is. And you can see we're starting to really build up the shape of the nose now. Next is the uh, Kaput Martum because we've got this kind of purplish tone. And again, I'm just doing the same thing. Wherever I see this colour, I'm just going to lay it down on this nose. Now this is going to get a lot darker and pigmented. Obviously, this is a black nose. So black, uh, it's a black tribod collie, she's got a black nose and we've not really used, obviously I've, I've just come in then with the black just to add it where those nostrils are. But we've not used it anywhere else yet. So yeah, it's all about turning the colours that are kind of showing underneath these darker tones that's exactly what I'm doing
and I'm making sure you can see blending over the areas that are already down because we want a smooth blend between these colours. Um, I don't want it to be like harsh colours like he, the burnt umber in one place put mortem in another. I want to just keep blending and blending till we get that smooth transition between them all. thinking that I may actually come in with a luminance um, and I'm going to use the sepia um, sepia 50% um, to help with the blend so this is um, I need let me get a new one because this one's tiny <laughs> so the sepia 50% this is going to be a really nice deep purpley tone And again, this is uh, just one way on how you can draw a dog's nose. This is just how I like to draw my my animals' noses. <laughs> um, I like to, if you've done any of my tutorials, or maybe you haven't, um, I like to use a lot of colour in my work. And I like to build up, as you can see, all these colours underneath to create the overall piece. I'm looking for those colours that are shining through the darker tones, the underneath colours. So I can create this really, hopefully, realistic effect, which with this piece I'm so, so happy with how it's turning out. So, yeah, I, I feel with this piece I'm definitely creating that realism. I think as well I may film uh, the tongue because uh, I know tongues can be tricky okay uh, I'm going to take the Payne's grey again just darkening up this nostril if there's anything else that you um, particularly struggle with or want more tips on when it comes to like drawing parts of an animal do let me know because if I'm ever doing a commission that has that kind of area on that I can film I will um so like I've got some cats coming up um with tabby fur so I'm going to film how I'm creating some of the tabby fur um I may even do a, a full tutorial on a cat eye as well from that commission because there's, there's a lot <laughs> there's six cats on that commission so it's going to be a big one so you can see now that I'm coming in with this Payne's grey we're really starting to get the effect of the dark dark nose and those colours are just really as I say they're going to just start shining through so much You can see as well as I'm building up this nose, I'm still following the structure, that, that curved nature of the nose. Because I want it to look 3D. I'm not pressing too hard either, I'm just using the sharp point of the pencil. Because I want to be able to keep adding layers. But you can see now we're starting to get to a point, especially on this side of the nose, where it's really smoothing out. And that is what we're looking for. 
And that's when you know you've got enough layers, you get a nice buttery stage um, to your piece. This is now the dark sepia. I'm just going to come back in. Give me that black. And all I'm doing now is just kind of flicking between the colours that I've used to build up this area. Now I won't actually finish this bottom part of the nose. What I like to do is kind of get it to this sort of point where it's still looking a little messy. Um, but I want to start bringing in the top part of the nose. Um, so I'm going to start with the silver grey from Luminance. And I do this because obviously we've got some nice light tones so then I know just how dark to go down here. I can blend everything together and it'll just hopefully look like we've done it all at once. And we've got a super nice dog nose. Again, I want to bring in those brown tones, so I'm coming in with the nugget this time because it's lighter than that burnt umber. And I'm not pressing too firmly, but we just want to start toning the paper. Now, on the top part of a nose, depending again on what detail you can see, but down here I can see, uh, on this particular nose, I can see the texture ever so slightly. So I'm coming in and doing circular motions. And this will just help me to build up a little bit of texture straight away as we keep layering our pencils. I'm leaving little gaps where those highlights are. Okay. Um, and then I am going to take the cold grey 5. And again, I'm just going to come over and start toning the paper. And then I'm going to take my sepia 10% um, which is a nice sort of purplish tone which will also tie into that sepia 50% that we used. Then this side of the nose again, we've got that blue, so I'm coming in with a dark indigo. I'm going to blend, making sure I've just kind of blended into that bit that we got in earlier because we want it all to look like it's done 
at the same time. Now you could do all, all of this at the same time. As I say, this is just how I like to work. I like to kind of do it in two halves. But it's just about, whenever you're drawing, it's just about kind of finding the way that you like to work. Um, this is the violet grey from the Luminance because you can really see that kind of purplish tone. I feel like it needs to be a bit of a brighter purple, but I think I'll be okay with the violet grey. And again, it's just about toning the paper. There's no detail. I'm just adding colour at the moment. But you can so hopefully you can see how this is really starting to come together now. You've got the shine on the nose. That 3D effect is slowly coming to life. And as I say, it's just about me layering all the different colours that I can see over and over till I've got a nice smooth layer. Remembering to blend and blend and blend. <laughs> Lots of blending. When I'm happy, I'm just going to come in with the paint spray. This is the Cold Grey 5. And this is where I'm just going to really start working on getting the values correct now. So, uh, actually I'm going to come in with the uh, this is the Derwent drawing black it's the darkest black you can get because it's so opaque And then I'm just switching between the black, the dark sepia and the Payne's grey. Again, it's just about blending out here. Um, I want those nice, oops, smoother transitions, as you can see. Grey 6 I don't want it to be as dark it's still dark but not as dark as below ok 
Okay, so you should be able to see now, like, I'm so happy with how that bit's turning out. Going back to that linear motion on the bottom section of the nose. Actually, you could also take the um, dark indigo from the luminance range. Again, I'm using it quite sharp now because I really want to start bringing in those details. But using the softer pencils really easy to come in and add those extra layers especially when it's like really nice and buttery to already work on again just curving it out of that nostril remember it's 3D it's going into that nostril and then I can come back with the um, day went drawing black blend that bit out a bit okay slowly getting there <laughs> as I say I do work quite slowly um, I like to take my time and build everything up and I know some people prefer to work faster and have results like straight away I guess but yeah this is just how I like to work um, where's that put mortem gone? Nope, that's not it. So, almost got this side built up now. So you can see how it just starts really coming together and then I'm just going to take that silver grey create those highlights knock it back a bit with a sepia but okay so hopefully you can see just like how dark we've gone now so I just need to do the same on the other side. Um, again, just going to start with those lighter colours, but just applying a little bit more pressure now. And actually, on this side, I'm just going to take my warm greys. Um, and just sharpen this. I'm using sharper pencils now because I'm getting to that point where there's um, it's really buttery to work on. So I really want a sharp pencil to just make sure I can get into the uh, last bits of the tooth of the paper. Again, the warmer side because this side has those warmer tones, whereas that side has a few more blue tones. Where's my dark sepia gone? Just making sure everything, as I keep repeating, is super, super blended. I am. Um, if you've not watched the previous video, which is a real time draw with me, I will uh, link it below. Um, because I probably should have mentioned this at the start this is drawn on the Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper 
So um, adding in all these layers is definitely helpful. I'm just looking. Uh, I do want to add a purple, so I'm just coming in with a purple on this top part of the nose. That's all I can see, and it's just not prominent enough on my drawing. Okay, that's looking better, right? Getting there. <laughs> As I say, I know I take my time, but to be fair, what's this? About half an hour so far on this nose, which isn't bad to say we've we're nearly there. It's not bad going. Where's my pencil extender? So this one's got a pain screen. Okay, so you can see I've just layered and layered until I've kind of got to this point that I'm really happy with here. I'm just going to come in with, a, this is a Pablo Coco. This is a really nice colour actually. I should use my Pablos more. I definitely don't reach for them enough. This will just tighten. And you'll see that I've used colours that are on the bottom of the nose and the top of the nose. So as I say, it all just seamlessly ties in. Um, and then I'm just making sure I've got enough layers because what I want to do now is use my, whoops, as I drop it, my slice tool. And I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of texture, especially in these sort of highlighted areas. And then if I take my white and I just like to go over the top but very softly, just soften that out. And there is our border collie's nose. Now at the moment it does kind of look stuck on. So what I just want to do now is take um, my Payne's Grey because this is what I've used down here. And just kind of pull, almost dragging that colour down. And then I'm going to do the same with the black pencil. Or I could do it with a dark sepia, but I'm just going to use the, the black. And this just makes it seamlessly blend. You can see the difference now. This side looks blended into this part of her muzzle. 
Um, whereas this side looks kind of stuck on because it's not as seamlessly blended. So usually I do actually get the nose drawn in first and then do all the fur around um, the muzzle. But for some reason on this piece, I actually waited to do the nose. On this side, it's a bit warmer toned, so I am going to take that cocoa. And then the dark sepia, because it's not as dark on this side of the face. Okay, and there's her nose. So I'll zoom you out so you can have a look. So I know it's not looking quite right yet because I've still got all of this side to bring in, but she now has her nose. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with this piece. I will try and sh let you see the whole piece so far. We'll ignore the collection of pencils. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is where I am with uh, this portrait, which I'm so, so happy with. So what I'm going to do now is uh, probably come over here with more of this fur before I move on to her mouth. So if you want to see me uh, draw the tongue and mouth area, uh, let me know in the comments below. Any questions and anything you'd like to see in future videos as I'm completing portraits, also let me know. Uh, give me a like, it really helps the channel out. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everybody.